Good do day on YouTube, brothers and sisters. As I ended my live stream devotional video on Facebook, I would like to speak about um, a, a song I was listening to while I was in the gym this morning. It was called, I'm Coming Back to the Heart of Worship. And there's a verse in that song that says, I'm sorry, Lord, for the things that I have done. Benjamin Franklin, who wasn't a professing Christian, once said, don't ruin an apology with an excuse. And as I thought of that saying, even though it's not in the Bible, it's actually biblical. In Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 7, when Adam and Eve were confronted by the serpent to take of the fruit when God forbade not to do it, they took, but what did they do? They made excuses. The woman said, the devil made me do it when confronted by God. Adam, when confronted by God, said, this woman you gave me. You see, brothers and sisters, this is our nature, to make excuses for whenever we, whenever we do something wrong. It's an area I struggle in. I grew up, my dad was pretty strong, pretty tough guy growing up with me. And he wanted me to be physically strong, whether it was with karate, boxing, weightlifting. And I grew up at times with a chip on my shoulder. Sometimes I'd lose my temper and make an excuse for it and say, well, an apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I'm just a chip off my old father's back, shoulder, whatever the saying goes. But that's not biblical. Now, don't get me wrong. How we grow up does have an effect on us. There's character traits in us. There's um, flaws in all of us that we struggle with. But when we sin, we can't make an excuse for our sins. The remedy truly is apologizing. The two hardest word at, at, at times in life to say is I'm sorry, because it's humbling to admit that you're wrong. It's easier to make an excuse. It's easier to try to cover your bad things that you've said and done with good works. Try to think that that's going to cover it up. Good works in themselves are good, but it's not the answer. The true core of our problem is that we need to confess. King David, 2 Samuel chapter 11, had a little rendezvous with a woman named Bathsheba. And for one year, he stayed quiet about what he did. Until he was confronted in 2 Samuel 12, about a year later, by a prophet by the name of Nathan. When convicted of his sin, in Psalm 51, verses 3 and 4, he said, Against you, O Lord God, and you alone have I sinned. His healing started to begin. And that's with our human relationships, too. Brothers and sisters, look at your lives. And you don't have to, you know, say it on social media, but be honest with yourself. How many human relationships in your life have been weakened, damaged because of a lack of apology? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 5, verses 23 and 24 said, Before you go to the altar, before you bring your sacrifices to a church or a temple back then, go to a brother and sister that you have a problem with and confess it to each other. Apologize. James chapter 5, verse 16. The Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. There's power in prayer, but that same verse... Right before that, and this is not quoted much, it says, confess your faults one to another. Brothers and sisters, confession is good for the soul. It truly is. I really liked what Franklin, Benjamin Franklin said. Do not blow an, an apology with an excuse. Adam and Eve did it. I've done it at times. And if we're honest, how often have we done it? And what has it been? What have we seen? The fruits of this. Relationships between our wife our husband, our children, uh, co-workers, parents growing up, family relationship, friends, co-workers at the job, as I was saying, you know, they, they're damaged. So let us humble ourselves, brothers and sisters. Let us follow what the Word of God says. Confessing our faults one to another. Humble ourselves. You see, God gives grace to the humble, but He opposes the proud. Proud people make excuses, try to cover their sins, Humble people confess it. 1 John 1, 9, if we, say, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. God gives grace to the humble. Proverbs 3.34, James 4.6, 1 Peter 5.5, 5, all three verses say the same thing. God gives grace to the humble, but he opposes the proud. Take care this day, brothers and sisters. 
May God help us all, humble us, convict us of our faults, not play the victim, but let us confess and apologize to God and others when we need to. Take care.